Hey guys, I'm P Freak. Welcome back to Pokemon Fire Red. Last time we started the adventure off by going to the Safari Zone and catching a brand new Pokemon, Execute, plus getting a few items over there. We got HMO3 Surf and also the HM for Strength. We also got went over to Saffron City and got our other party member, Hitmon Lee, which we named Lee Sin. And we also finally had Crash fully evolved. Plus we fought a bunch of trainers. Plus we actually went to our fifth gym. It is the fifth gym. Yeah, it's the fifth gym. So we did a whole lot of stuff last time. In this part, we're going to head on over back to Saffron City because there's still plenty for us to do over there. But before we do, I just want to mention that if you go over to this building right next to the Warden's house and talk to this guy, I'm the Fishing Guru's older brother. I simply love fishing. I can't bear to go without. Tell me, do you like to fish? Not really. Grand, I like your style. I think we can be friends. Stick this and fish, young friend. This is where you get the good rod. Kind of obsolete considering that we already have the super rod, but that's where you get the good rod. Anyways, with that all said and done, I'll meet you guys over back at Saffron. Actually, before we head over to Saffron, there are a few things I want to show you. Since we now have the ability to surf across water thanks to the gym badge, I'm going to show you a few places that you can go to now that we have surf unlocked. Start off with this guy over here. Hello there. I've seen you about, but I've never had a chance to chat. It must be good luck that finally brought us together. I'd like to celebrate this by teaching you the move Soft Boiled. Soft Boiled is a healing move mostly well known to be known by Chansey and Blissey, but I don't think anyone on my team can learn that. Uh, I think it used to be in TM and T in uh, Generation 1, which is why you have a tutor here. It's the same case for the Thunder Wave and Rock Slide tutor. And only one Pokemon can learn it, so be wary about that. Anyways. I also recommend that you guys please, for the love of God, get a flying type on your team. I didn't get one and I'm kind of suffering because of it. Next up, I want to head over here to Route 24. We now have this big patch of water that we can surf on. I also enjoy the surf music. Surf music's nice. It always is that it's in the same genre as like water, temp water dungeons or whatever. It just kind of has that nice soft feel to it. Anyways, if we surf on all the way over to here... This is a Cerulean Cave. Horribly strong Pokémon live inside there. It takes a very special trainer to be allowed inside here. You'd have to be strong enough to become the Pokémon League Champion, for starters. And you would have to have made a great achievement. Well, that's intriguing, but if we walk all the way back over here... We have a trainer. Some random trainer that is possibly the earliest point we can probably fight them. Because we haven't had Surf before. What level are they? Okay. So yeah, we just have a trainer over here otherwise. There might be a hidden item over here. I'll check in a bit. Well, that was annoying. All she had was two Paris and a Parasect. Anyways, is there any hidden item around here at all? Or is it literally just this trainer? I guess it's literally just this trainer. You can, of course, hop off these ledges if you want to go back to Mount Moon for whatever reason. But besides that, there's not much else to be found here. If we head over here to Route 10, just before the Rock Tunnel, you may have noticed that I kind of passed over this area and didn't talk much about it. But now if we surf onto it... Crasher is getting a lot of screen time. <laughs> and if we go all the way down here, and past this guy, we arrive here, the Power Plant. I'm not going to deal with this yet. We will come back and deal with this in just a bit, but probably not this episode because there's something really special that happens at the end with this area. I know, it's so out of the way you would think that's not really all that important, but it's actually really nice. Heading on down here to Route 12, if you remember there's been this item that's been taunting us this entire time. What is that item? It is TM48 Skill Swap. I think that swaps the two abilities of the user and the target, if I remember correctly. I didn't think that was TM. Yeah, the user employs its like power to swap abilities with the bow. It's used for a lot of really cheesy strategies inside the competitive scene. <laughs> it can be fun. It can be like, for example, there's a Pokemon that was introduced in the third generation called Shedinja that has the ability Wonder Guard. And um, there are what Wonder Guard does is that the Pokemon is not affected by any moves except super effective moves. And what's nice is that there's also a Pokemon in this generation called Sableye, who is a Ghost Dark-type, and in this generation 
has no weaknesses, has no type weaknesses whatsoever. So you could have some really fun doing that. Unfortunately, within modern games, that's been changed to where dark type does have some more weaknesses now, so there are no zero weakness Pokemon anymore. Which sucks because there were actually two Pokemon that had the, the ghost dark type. Alright, I think that's all we have for surfing at the moment. There is, of course, the route south of Palatown. I know, we can fly all the way back to Palatown and head down here to Cinnabar Island. And we also have this route right here. But before we do all that, I did say we were going to go to Saffron, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to fly over to Saffron. And I'm going to grab my berry back. Alright, now that we have Barry back on our team, there are a few other places of interest here while we're in Saffron City. Saffron belongs to Team Rocket. I guess we can't head on over there. Okay, wow. I was thinking of more places of interest, but geez, Team Rocket really just does not want me to go anywhere. Pokemon Trainer Fan Club. Many trainers have scribbled their names on the sign. We've already been to a fan club in Vermilion. It's not like this is going to offer anything. I guess we just have no choice but go into this giant building. <laughs> he's taking a snooze. Okay then. Let's just sneak by him and welcome to Sylph Company. Same guys who made that Sylph Scope. And I'm guessing Team Rocket has taken over the place, judging by the ominous music. Wow, we have no one here on the first floor. Okay then. Anyone? Oh. Found someone. Well, I guess this is a good time to introduce that. Welcome to our next big area. Silphco has been overrun by Team Rocket, and we have to go try to stop them. There are about 20-something trainers in this entire building, and this building also gets really confusing really quickly. So there are a lot of optional trainers. I forgot to go heal up. But there are a lot of optional trainers around here, so chances are I'm probably going to be skipping a lot of battles. I don't know if they'll run away after we complete the area, so I'll probably be fighting all of them before we go on to the final area. I do know for a fact, though, from researching, that there is an area inside the building that we can go to for sleeping foresight, eh, nah. I already have Mind Reader. Mind Reader guarantees that the next move is going to land, which is good for moves like um, Dynamic Punch, Rock Slide. Rock Slide is low accuracy. Uh, Lisa and also could have learned some other decent moves. It would have made a decent combo. But again, it's only on your next move. Your next turn, I should say. In Generation 1, it was on your next attacking move. While in this generation, it's on your next turn. So if you miss... If you uh, miss... <laughs> we're kind of avoiding missing here. If you get sent to sleep, for example, or get paralyzed, then you're going to have to reapply the mind reader. Jesus Christ, this guy has so many goddamn Pokemon. I, so I'm going to quickly go, I think it's on the ninth floor, that there's actually a rest stop that we can go to in order to heal up. So we don't have to keep leaving the building. But yeah, there are a bunch of optional trainers. There are some required trainers, I think. I don't remember completely, but this place is a maze, basically. I know a lot of people who get really confused to where this, where you're supposed to go in here. So, let's get the Amulet coin back to crash. We're still a bit low on money to get all the items I've been needing to get. Once I get all the items and get some more money, then I'll stop with the whole Amulet coin switching thing. But anyways, if we go to the elevator here, come on, stop running into walls. And we can go all the way up to the ninth floor. This has 11 total floors. So yeah, there's a lot for us to explore. This way, I'm pretty sure that guy is a trainer. There are a lot of scientists around here who were originally Sylph Co. employees, but then they got converted over to Team Rocket. So, come on. Ah, uh, whoops. Alright, so during that battle, I did a bit of research up on this area so I could actually find what I'm looking for. First off, I was correct saying that the bed that you could use at the little rest stop is located here, but unfortunately we can't access it without needing a card key. Where do we get that card key? Well, head on back to the elevator, and we go on down to the fifth floor. We 
go around here. If I remember correctly, whoops. All right, what I was gonna say is that if I remember correctly, I think there's only, in this entire place, besides some special battles, there's only one required grunt that we actually need to fight. I don't know if that's entirely true, so I'll still be fighting all these guys, mostly off, like, I'll cut out all the fights. But, before we do all that, somewhere around here is that card key that we need, and it's clearly not in this room. So let's see. Try to avoid the scientists. I think. Okay. We can avoid this guy if we go in this warp tile. Oh, we could have... Okay, well. We got through here, and then try to just scoot past him. Boom, we get the card key. Now we're able to open all these different doors without a problem. God dang it. Okay, now that we've defeated that guy, if we go up to one of these doors over here and use the card key, we can open it. This, of course, just leads us through nothing, apparently. But with this card key, you can go basically anywhere in this entire area, including over here. You look tired, you should take a quick nap. Thank you, thank you. All right, and with that all said and done, I'm gonna go through every floor and fight every possible trainer that we can. And I'll also cut in whenever we find like an item or something of interest. All right, looks to be there are two different doors here that you can unlock with the card key. Uh, what do you have to say? You can no stop help. Oh, you're not with Team Rocket. I'm sorry, I thought. Will you forgive me if I teach you the Thunder Wave technique? No, but we already have Thunder Wave. Thank you very much, lady. Let's see. I think that's the only thing of interest here. Are you a trainer? Yep. Or apparently you're a self employee. My bad. Here on the third floor, we have this door right here, which leads to another room. And if we go through here leads into this room, which has a Hyper Potion. Not bad. I should probably also mention, this is probably obvious, once you unlock the door here, it stays unlocked even if you leave the building. So you don't have to worry about constantly having to press A and go through here over and over again. Here on the fourth floor, we have this item right here, TM41 Torment. Torment makes it so the, tar the Pokemon who's been tormented cannot use the same move twice in a row. Through this door on the same floor, we have several things here. We have a full heal, a max revive, and an escape rope. Not bad, not bad. I don't think you can escape rope out of here, though. Shh, can't you see I'm hiding? I mean, to be fair, this is a pretty great hiding spot. Up here on the fifth floor, besides the card key, we also have this item, a protein. I'll be giving that to Lee Sin. He definitely needs some more physical power. And if we talk to this guy right over here, those thugs that took over her building. Their boss said he was looking for strong Pokemon. I hope our president managed to avoid trouble. Probably. I mean, Team Rocket seems really incompetent, if you ask me. Over here! TM01 Focus Punch. It's a interesting move. So, for Focus Punch to work properly, you need to take, after you use it, you need to not take any damage. Basically, the Pokemon is trying to tighten its focus, and if it takes damage, it loses its focus and does not attack at all, which kind of blows. I should probably say this right now before I forget to say anything. Having a fighting type in this area is not exactly the best idea, so while we do have Lee Sin for our party, he's not really going to be able to shine until much later unfortunately, but he's still managing to get off some decent fights. The issue is that there are a lot of psychic types, flying types, and poison types running around right here. Now granted, I did teach him rock slide so we can avoid a lot of trouble, especially with flying types. So at least he has some type coverage, and also strength helps out a lot too. Over here on the sixth floor, we have another little storage area. We have an HP up, not bad. And we have an X special. That raises the special attack, I believe. Moving on up to the seventh floor, we have this calcium right up here. Seems there are a lot of vitamins around here. Again, these are fine to use if you want to actually use them on your Pokemon, but they also make good selling material. Did not mean to fight you yet. 
Going through this door over here on the seventh floor, we have this item. TM-08, bulk up, that raises both your attack and defense. Not a bad move at all. And then, looks like we have another rocket grunt we need to fight here, but it doesn't look like there are any items around here. If we go over here, can we sneak back to you? No, we cannot. Alright, going through here. Phew, it's really dangerous here. You came to save me? You can't. No, I just came here because I need to get to the next gym. Team Rocket was after the Master Ball, which catches any Pokemon. That's intriguing. Who do bad Team Rocket took over still for our Pokemon? Again, just another room full of people who are just complaining about being captured. Moving on down, or moving on up to the 8th floor, we have an item right here which contains an iron. You're probably another trainer, aren't you? Nope. Team Rocket's boss is terribly cruel. To him, Pokemon are just tools to be used. What will happen if that tyrant takes over our company? Eh, uh, yeah, sounds just like mafia stuff. It's not. No worries. <laughs> over here. Talk to this guy. You wonder if Sylph is finished. Probably just more access to warp tiles. Nothing else useful here, it seems. Over here on the 10th floor, we have three more items. We have a Carbos. We have a rare candy. Not bad, not bad. And an Ultra Ball. That has a 2 times capture rate compared to the Great Ball's 1.5 and the Pokeball's 1 times capture rate. And finally, here on the 11th floor, we have a trainer and a Zinc. But it looks like we also have stuff over there. We can only access over there through the warp tiles, so... I guess we need to adventure through the warp tiles now. Fun. Before we make it up to the main event for Sylphco, I went on over to Celadon City, quickly grabbed one of the ATM over at the game corner. Which TM? The flamethrower TM for our pupper. Now, of course, when it was a Growlithe, it was able to learn this move at level freaking 49 or something. It's like, I don't want a Growlithe to freaking stay at that level for that long. I need it to be an Arcanine now. So I just went over and bought that TM, and I think that's the last of the TMs that we actually need to buy over there. So we have Flamethrower now instead of Flame Wheel, which is much stronger, as you can see. 95 base power instead of 60. So hopefully more one-shotting will come out of Pupper. But with that all said and done, this is the warp tile you need to go to get to the main event. And look who it is. This asshole. What kept you, Jordan? <laughs> I thought you'd turn up if I waited here. I guess Team Rocket slowed you down, not that I care. I saw you in Saffron, so I decided to see if you got better. Right, you care more about me being worse than you than you care about the fact that this company is about to be taken over by the Mafia. Yeah, we can definitely see where your morals stand right now. Starts off with Pidgeot. Pidgeot should, hopefully. Wow, Pidgeot actually survived a rock slide. Oof, that's going to be painful. Oh, I forgot to use all those vitamins I actually got around here. Okay, then, I see how it is then, Pidgeot. Suffer. You quick attack me, I paralyze you. Not that that matters. But I also shockwave you. How dare you destroy him, he said. He barely gets any chance to shine, and then you just go and ruin his hopes and dreams. At this point, this battle should not be that difficult. We have a lot of type. Uh, see, he brings out Gyarados next. I'll be able to just one-shot this thing for it. We have a lot of different type advantages over his Pokemon, so... It shouldn't be much of an issue. There's no real Pokemon I'm afraid of. They're about the same level as us. So that's not bad. I always get worried when the bar takes like really long for it to go all the way down. Because in the later generations, Wow, you still haven't evolved your Relic yet? Why are you waiting for Flamethrower at level freaking 49? What was I saying? Oh yeah, I'm used to in the later generations where the bars go down the exact same speed. Like, no matter what, no matter how much HP you go, you deal damage in. It goes down at basically a consistent rate. It's hard to explain, but basically you have an easier time telling if you actually did one-shot something in the later games than you do in this game. Is Red just going to sweep through everyone? I'm just not in the mood to swap out, to be honest. No, so close. Ooh, Calm Mind. Calm Mind's like the special variation of Bulk Up, where it raises special attack and special defense instead. 
but another Thunderbolt should still KO the Alakazam. Alakazam's basically one of the strongest Pokémon, if not the strongest Pokémon, that you could probably get at this point. It's a really strong psych Psychic Special Attacker. But... okay. I'll actually swap that now. Let's give that Flamethrower a shot, shall we? Level 40, you're actually kind of a higher level than us, and we've been fighting every single... Trainer, my god. Alright, I guess I'll use a full heal real quick. I don't have any more Awakening Santanos and Paralyzed Heals, but it's good to just get full heals anyways. They're probably a bit cheaper considering how considering how much value you get out of them. It'll, full heals heal up all status conditions. So if you have Confusion and Paralysis at the same time, example, it'll heal up both of them. Anyway, Flamethrower. Hopefully this one shot. Oh, wow. Well, to be fair, Venusaur is kind of full. Come on. Enough with the sleep power. For the love of God. Just make this go faster. Either miss the sleep powder or don't sleep powder me at all. That shouldn't do a lot of damage. Yeah, it did a lot more damage than I was expecting. Alright, come on. And I forgot to count. Did you have any more other train any other Pokemon with you? Yep. Let's see. Nope, that's it! Oh man, so you are ready for the boss rocket. Yeah, and I've kind of already encountered him before. Well, Jordan, I'm moving on up ahead and ahead. By checking my Pokedex, I'm starting to see what's strong and how they evolve. Am I a genius or what? I'm going to the Pokemon League to boot out the Elite Four. I'll become the world's most powerful trainer. Jordan, well, good luck to you. Don't sweat it. Smell ya! Or you could just be me, use the internet, and Bulbpedia and Cerebi and all that stuff. I'm gonna go heal up. Alright, now that we got that six rival battle all the way, technically five if we didn't do that extra one. If we talk to this guy right over here, oh hi, you're not a rocket, you came to save us? Why thank you. I want to get out of this Pokemon for saving us. And we obtained the Pokemon Lapras. Lapras is a really strong, wa well it's a really bulky water ice type. It's not a bad Pokemon in most means. I just do think that in later generations it does fall off. But it was especially strong in the first generation. It's a Lapras. It's a very intelligent Pokemon. We kept it in our lab, but it will be much better off with you. I think you will be good, a good trainer for Lapras. It's a good swimmer. It'll give you a lift across water. I think this is the only location you can get a Lapras within the first generation. I think there are other locations you can get in this game, but I'm not entirely sure about that. Oh, looks like we do have the one required trainer. Stop right there. Don't you move. Well, one required trainer besides the rival. Seems like everyone else was just not required. We could just avoid everyone else if we wanted to. But I didn't. I fought everyone, and I got a bunch of experience out of it. I know those Cubones are incredibly defensive heavy. Yeah, see? Oh, Rage. That's gonna do a lot of damage. I've actually been playing as Cubone in, uh, Super Mystery Dun in a Mystery Dungeon DX or whatever it's called. And it's actually really strong. I just got Bone Ring, and oh jeez, Bone Ring is really strong. In the Mystery Dungeon games, Bone Meringue is a ground-type move that hits up to 10 spaces away and pierces enemies. If you've never played a Mystery Dungeon game, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but it's really strong, and it also is able to hit up to two times. In this game, it just is able to hit up to twice, two times, which is not bad. Ooh, Marowak. Which is still not a bad move, but there are better ground-type moves. One more brick break, and we should be able to finally face the boss. Nice. Good to work, Leeson. You know, for Pokemon based around kicks, you don't do a lot of kicking. In later games, I do know Lee, um, Hitmonlee eventually learns the move Blaze Kick, which, if it was available in this game, I would totally have it learned. But for the time being, it's fine. I'm fine with the move set, move set it has right now. Anyways, that all said and done. Finally move on to the boss's place. Ah, Jordan, so we meet again. The president and I are discussing a vital business proposition. Keep your nose out of grown-up matters. Or experience a world of pain. Oh please, I beat you last time, I'll beat you again. Hell, I beat your entire building here. And, and, let's not forget all the trainers that I fought earlier. Alright, so he starts off with the Nidorino. Gonna do a surf, see if, how much damage that does. 
Don't want to hit it with any physical or contact attacks because I don't want to be poisoned. Alright, 2 AKO, not bad. We will eventually get a good ground type move to fight these poison types off, but they're also psychic. That if I want to use psychic, I could also do that. Neato Queen! This should be easy, it's part ground type just like Neato King, so it should be weak to water. Although it is more defensive, so maybe it won't one shot. Yeah, damn. If it was a Neato King, then yeah, for sure, it would definitely one shot. Alright, we get it. My defense fell constantly. Nice. Alright, next up is Kangaskhan again. Uh, I guess we'll just keep using Surf. <laughs> you know, in the anime, they don't constantly keep spamming the same move. I know that would be kind of annoying, that would be kind of boring to actually watch, but if it was more realistic. Pokemon wise, anyways, the Pikachu would not be fainting to a level 5 snake. And also, they'd be spamming a lot more and using a lot more items. I mean, I've heard the recent, more recent ones a lot better, especially with Sun and Moon. But I have yet to actually see it myself. I have seen uh, screen captures of Scorbunny, though, and Scorbunny looks adorable in it. And Rhyhorn should fall to one side. So it was literally just crashing, surfing over everyone. Nice. Ah, I lost again? Yep, and you're gonna keep losing. Last it all, you ruined our plans for self, but Team Rocket will never fall. Jordan, never forget that all Pokemon exist for Team Rocket. I must go, but I shall return. You know, you guys would win if you actually carried guns with you instead of Pokemon. And I think that's proof that all the rocket trainers do leave afterwards. Oh dear boy, thank you for saving Sylph. I will never forget you saved us in our moment of peril. I have to thank you in some way. Because I am rich, I can give you anything. How about a lot of money, please? Just so we can get through the rest of our adventure? Or we get the Master Ball. Sure, that works. You can't buy that anywhere. It's our secret prototype Master Ball. It will catch any Pokemon without fail. You should be quiet about using it though. Okay, I'll just go use it on a Pidgey or something. Thank you for rescuing all of us. We, from the president down, are indebted to you. Yay, you're indebted to a ten-year-old kid. But with that, we saved Silphco. And we screwed Team Rocket's plans up. Hopefully now they're nowhere to be seen around in the city. Hopefully I can actually go into those buildings now. Only one way to find out. Heading on outside. Yeah, it looks like they're gone. Wonder where they ran off to. But, with that all said and done, we went ahead and saved Silphco from Team Rocket. And now the Team Rocket's gone, we finally have access to our next gym battle. So, I think that's where we're gonna end it off here. If you like what I do, subscribe to my channel, consider supporting me on Patreon, and follow me on all my social media links. All that will be in the description. I'll see you all next time where we go on to our sixth gym battle. I'll see you all then.